watching it guys thanks for stopping back by the channel today we've got some really cool stuff in uh, store right here back with the Duramax um, right when you get done with these big projects you always find all those little nitpicky tiny little things that you want to be fixing so today we're gonna be working on fit and finish just the little edge items like my front wheels you know of course they don't clear you know you put 37s on one of these things they don't clear perfectly so we're gonna be working on doing some a full NorCal, show you guys in depth what to do on that one. I already kind of trimmed up the, the front, did a nice little edge trim on that one, so we don't need to worry about showing you how to do that one. That was just a simple little bit of edge trim put on there. But we're gonna show you how to do a, a full NorCal on the back side of the inner fender, and then we got some covers for the license plate, just a little fit and finish thing. Hope you guys enjoy. Like I said, as you can see here in the front end, we had to trim the bumper back. It would have gone down just straight flush and that would have hit pretty much right away. So we trimmed everything back nice and flush and easy. And then I just used the door sill edge trim to fit into onto those edges right there. Tacked a little bit of glue in with it just so it'll make sure it'll stay. I think it looks a lot cleaner that way. But the thing we're gonna be focusing on is the rear. As you can see, I trimmed back just the edge of the a uh, little cowl piece here, and then there are the fender flare, and then we still have some rubbing on the inner fender here. So a lot of the guys, they just end up taking a hacksaw or a chop saw and fucking just meow, chopping this thing straight across, all the steel, all the metal, and it looks like shit. So we're not gonna be doing that kind of crap. We're gonna make this thing look right, look good. So the first thing we need to do is we need to pull back this inner fender. We're gonna trim the steel back on the inside, and then we'll be able to roll that inner fender liner back so it still looks like it's got a, you know, a decent amount of coverage. Look at that, we're all full of junk and nasty grime. So this is the steel we're gonna be trimming back here, right in this area just to be able to roll this fender back and give it the uh, inner fender liner something else to hold on to. We'll get the uh, grinder out here. First thing we're gonna do, uh, we cleaned everything out real good in here because I wanna be able to clean that out real, you know, and seal it because this is where a lot of that road debris and junk sits. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna cut some reliefs and chop into this weld. We don't wanna cut it off, we just wanna cut some reliefs so then we can hammer it back that way. So that's what we're gonna start off with. We've got a diamond cutting wheel on an air tool.
So I refilled all the little openings and holes down in here with uh, RTV and then I sealed all the places I hammered back that was kind of stripped of the any kind of paint or covering it had to it so I painted all of that so we don't have any corrosion down the road. The next thing we're going to do is uh, replace our panel and uh, find some screws so it sit, the uh, inner fender sits more flush up into the fender there. So now that we got everything trimmed up, you can't really tell from the outside. Made a nice even cut through there. And then we sunk the inner fender back in. Right there. So have a look at that compared to that, which is how the other side is. So I think it looks hella clean and ain't gonna rub no more. So all you gotta do is rinse and repeat for the other side, get that thing all tucked back, nice flush even. Even with this mod, we've got right around three fourths of an inch of clearance with the inner fender all tucked back in there nice and neat. And nobody who actually, you know, just looked at it from a glance would know the difference. It's something that you guys don't need to chop all of your plastic apart to, you know, just hurry up quick just to make the tire fit. Don't do that. Take your time, pull it back, trim the inners, take your time, make nice even cuts, clean it up, reseal it so you don't have rust down the road, and then we're gonna put your inner fender back like it never even happened. Nice, clean, easy NorCal. That's the way you do it for real. And the last little mod, we got some uh, nice little covers for our license plate since in our own, here in Ohio we have these junk front license plate. So we'll do a quickly easy little thing to that one. Just got the tinted plate instead of having the uh, dealer tag on there. I hate Ohio, but you know what? Until I get a nice big steel bumper to go on this thing, that's the way it's going to have to be. After I get the steel bumper, then... I'll just roll with the punches and see how it ends up. Well guys, that's all I've got for you today on this upload. Stay tuned, we're gonna be doing a whole lot more little no uh, modifications to this. We've got in store, we've got tail lights. We've got a really awesome set of those that I'm putting in, LEDs, OLED, C-channel displays on them. They're pretty badass. And then I'm gonna be doing a how-to on doing truck flags. I don't know, something really neat and nifty that a lot of guys do for truck shows and stuff like that. We'll be doing a how-to on that one as well. So make sure you stay tuned for those. Check me out over on Instagram, over at Rust Belt Mechanic, or on Facebook as well. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. You guys stay awesome.